Hello world, and I'm welcome to yet another video, and... Uh, yeah, math notation sucks. But not for the reasons uh, that you may think. Because math notation is actually really fine. If you exclude the you know, functions, things with no standard notation, exponents, etc. It's actually pretty fine. But that's not the topic of today's video. The topic of today's video is... Why math notation sucks due to its misleading reputation. So let's start with... Oh, wait a second. Much better. So let's start something that might be quite surprising, because you see, math notation is not actually necessary. Because yes, what we could always do is we could actually use words to describe a mathematical equation. Now, not many people realize that, and that's for a reason. You see, if we have an equation like this, now we could describe it just like so, with some, you know, numbers and mathematical symbols, which is really convenient. But we could also describe it using words. In this case, the value of y is equal to 2 divided by 1 plus the sum of 4 and x divided by 3. Right away, it's quite easy to see why did we choose to use numbers. So now let's start with something simple, like this equation. Now, if I were to show this equation to some, you know, normal human being, then their reaction would be quite simple. What the f***? If I were to show it to an advanced mathematician, though, their reaction would be, what the f***? Because, you see, this equation is really <laughs> large. There's no way to actually understand what it's doing. But there's one thing that's really important. It is an actually simple equation. It only has multiplication, division, subtraction, and addition. On the other hand, if I were to convert this equation into this, then no human being would react, what the f***? An advanced mathematician, though, would say, oh, that's actually pretty simple. This equation right there is describing a shape like this. How? Well, believe it or not, by the end of this video, you will understand that equation. So let's start with graphs and equation graphing. Because you see, when you have different equations, they create different graphs. Shocker, I know. But let's go through a few examples anyway, to get ourselves familiar with how it works. If we have an equation like y is equal to x, then we just get a straight line, because 2 is equal to 2, 4 is equal to 4, and negative 1 is equal to negative 1. Then for an equation like y is equal to 2 times x, we get the same line but rotated a bit, because 4 is equal to 2 times 2, 1 is equal to 2 times 0 0.5, and negative 7 is equal to 2 times negative 3. And right before we go to the actually game-changing example, let's also look at the y is equal to c. What is c? Well, apart from it being a great programming language, it is a constant, because you see the more you go to the right, the greater the x, but the constants stay, well, constant. And we don't have to use the c for it, basically any letter of the alphabet, except for x and y, means constant, or in other words, just a number that is not dependent on the position on the plane, or in other words, a number that doesn't change, or in other words, a number that has nothing to do with y and x. Now if you graph a function like y is equal to x times x, it's a little bit different. You can quite clearly see that something has changed. That's because what changed is the shape. Whilst changing the constants in our equation will alter the general look of the graph slightly, to change the shape of the graph we have to add x's that have different exponents, or in other words, x's with different powers. By the way, x to the 0th power is equal to 1, so I'll just skip it. So now we can see that the constant gives us a straight line. ax plus c gives us a rotated line. ax to the 2nd power plus b times x plus c gives us a parabola. a times x to the 3rd plus b times x to the 2nd plus c times x plus d gives us this shape. And even more complex equations give us even more funky shapes. But why am I telling you this? Well, it's because in our more expert-like equation, we can clearly see x to the second power times a plus x times b plus c, which means this equation. Now, that's a really convenient fact to keep in your mind, because what it basically means is that we can ignore this entire monstrosity in the top left corner. 
Because you see, those are all just constants. They stay constant and all we have to remember is that they are a number. We don't actually care what they are equal to. But there's still one pretty important constant there, the L in the top right corner, and it is there for a reason. Because you see, if it's equal to P3X, I could just use P3X everywhere, but I don't. That's because there are specific conventions in mathematics, and just so happens that L usually means length. That's a pretty convenient thing about mathematics, if you think about it. Usually, constants are self-explanatory, like C is just a constant, L is equal to length, R to radius. Now it's time for recap, to remind ourselves what we know. And what do we know? Well, we know that in the top left corner there are just constants, in the top right corner there is a length, and this red equation right there is a parabola. So I already explained three things, there are only three more left to go, so let's do it. Starting with the integral. That's a scary one, isn't it? A special shape, often used in calculus, probably something mystical. Well, no, it's just the area under the function. Yep. When we got our parabola, th th this integral basically means the th that's the area under this parabola. Yeah, th that's all it means. That's that's it. Just ju just the area under the yeah. It's listen. Ma math is not that hard, honestly. So well, that's it. This area is just the area under the parabola. And that's it. Now, the reason why this may be surprising is because that was the hardest bit. Now everything is just really simple. Don't believe me? Well, watch me speedrun it. On the right, we see R A V R. What A V R means is average, which basically means average radius. That's the average height of the parabola. And what is this area of L divided by L? Well, that's just the way you get the radius. If you take the radius of a shape, multiply it by its length, you get the area. But if you take the area and divide it by its length, you get back the radius. That's the entire thing on the right. So there we go, the entire thing explained. Now it's time for the grand finale. This one will be a bit weird, because not gonna lie, that's make it maths right there. You see, this huge equation in the middle is everything joined together. Now it may be familiar and that's because that's just the equation for a cylinder. Yes, radius squared times pi times length, that's the equation for a cylinder. But you have to remember our radius is a parabola which basically means we won't get a cylinder, we will get a shape that looks like this. So this entire weird equation just tells you the volume of this shape. As I said, math notation is really not that hard. Now if you're wondering where did I get this equation, then I would really recommend you check out my how to calculate the volume of a boat fender video where I explain step by step how I made it. Because yes, that's my own equation. So there we go. The math notation is actually fine, its reputation is just problematic, because math is much easier than you think. So don't be scared to learn it. But there's still one more question left, because you see the title of today's video is Math Notation Sucks, so that's a contradiction, right? I mean, I just said math notation is fine, how can it suck? Well, in order to answer that question, you see, I'll have to tell you about the size of computers, which was a video I made quite some time ago, and I still think up to this very day it is the best video on my channel in comparison to its length. I made the music for it, the models, the animation, I narrated the whole thing. It is really great. On the other hand, very recently I made the video called The Universe Engine, which was a sort of joke video that was, you know, teaching people about physics was at the same time being well, a joke, you know, for that real edutainment. And now, no doubt, the universe engine was way worse. But it got almost five times more views than the size of computers. Why? Well, that's because of clickbait. 
and as every professional YouTuber from now on I'll just have to clickbait my videos, very sorry about that. But I started the Patreon, so if you want to go, go to that in the description below. I have a couple of tiers, if you now of course I'm kidding, no, I mean not about Patreon thing, but I will try to avoid clickbait or all the other things. I mean I haven't done a reaction video on this channel, so I'm pretty proud. Anyway, that will be it for this video. Once again, link to my Patreon is in the description and link to the charity Slice of Pie where you can donate some money to charity and get a slice of pie for yourself as also in the description. Also link to my free music on my website that you can use in your videos. That'll be it for this episode. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.